As a biology student at the University of the Philippines, Manila, taking notes is part of the core of my being. If I hadn't taken notes in the most effective way I know, I wouldn't have survived my two years in the university. I would probably be spending way more time on readings that aren't really necessary, and I would also probably be drowning in the piles of learning materials that I already have. So today, I'm gonna walk you through my digital note-taking system, all the way from the tools that I use to my workflow. As a disclaimer, my note taking process isn't meant to be taken as a one-size-fits-all. This is not designed to conform to all courses and learning styles. This is just something that I have developed and that I'm still working on as I learn from you and of course everyone else around me. Similar to most of you guys, I too am still in the process of changing my note-taking system from time to time based on what's working and what's not working. But I do hope my current note-taking system gives you an opportunity to find what works for you. So first things first, First, let's get our tools ready. So I use my 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro for concept-heavy courses such as biology, zoology, and morphology. You don't have to get the same exact laptop that I have, especially since I think this is already out of the market. Any laptop works fine as long as it meets your budget and of course your needs. Also, I type my notes on concept-heavy courses because I just find it easier to cope with lectures this way. With that, I have a laptop stand which was kindly sent by Lanshan, so thank you to Lanshan for gifting me this trusty laptop stand. Their L5 laptop stand can be adjustable to multiple angles depending on your need. It's not flimsy at all, it's durable, sturdy, and even compatible to a wide array of devices. The aluminum surface of the laptop stand also has rubber pads so it keeps your laptop cool and ventilated and it also avoids scratches between your laptop and the stand. Before receiving this laptop stand, I honestly had a really really hard time with online classes because I was always hunched forward off my seat trying to level my eyesight with my screen. My neck was hurting, my wrists were hurting, my back was hurting, everything about my setup before was straining my body so much. With this laptop stand though, I now have the proper viewing height to boost my productivity while reducing the physical strain on my body. So I'm really really thankful that they sent me this laptop stand because I got to experience the comfort I needed while studying. This stand is great for anyone studying and working from home, so if you're looking for a laptop stand to improve your workflow while maintaining comfort, the Lenshon L5 laptop stand is great for you. If you're interested, you may visit the link in the description below. In getting a laptop stand, I would also recommend getting a keyboard and a mouse. I have the RK68 mechanical keyboard and the Logitech Pebble mouse respectively. The laptop stand together with the keyboard and mouse have made such a huge difference in my comfort and in my workflow. I know that as students, we make decisions within a budget constraint, so getting a laptop stand, a keyboard, and a mouse all at once may be a lot, but if you're a student studying on your setup for more than 8 or 10 hours a day, it's really an investment to improve your setup when you can. You don't want to be hunching your shoulders forward or elevating your elbows just to reach your laptop because this can worsen your posture and even strain your body. So getting a keyboard and a mouse together with your laptop stand can alleviate any posture-related problems you may get from sitting on your desk for hours. Now for computation-heavy courses such as math, physics, and statistics, I I use I hope I get this right. I use my 2021 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. Again, you don't have to get the same exact iPad that I have. There are a ton of other alternatives in the market right now. Just make sure that you research well on its features so that the tablet you'll be using will really meet your needs. Now, in computation-heavy courses, there are formulas and equations that are difficult to type. And in studying, we want to be as efficient as we can. To do so, I actually find it easier to handwrite my notes on computation-heavy courses so I can efficiently work around the solutions in case I make a mistake or in case the formulas are complex. To handwrite my notes on the iPad, I use the second generation Apple Pencil and along with that, I also have a trifold smart case and a screen protector. I used to have the glossy screen protector for the first couple of months after purchasing the iPad because I thought changing the screen protector would make such a huge difference because at the end of the day, it's just a screen protector. But changing to a matte 
paper-like screen protector has changed the note-taking game for me. Writing has been a lot smoother. I don't have to worry about the Apple Pencil slipping on the screen. It just glides across the screen much more easily than before. Also, for some reason, the handwriting recognition is better. It's easier to get refined lines and to get how your handwriting looks like on paper. Moving on to digital tools, the apps that I mainly use are Google Docs for concept-heavy courses and GoodNotes for computation-heavy courses. I know that in my past note-taking system, I used to use and swear by Microsoft Word, but since we're transitioning back to face-to-face -to -face classes, I need to access my notes anytime and anywhere. With Microsoft Word, I could only access my notes through my laptop, which for me was kind of a hassle because my laptop weighs so much and it's honestly a burden to carry it around. I know that there is also a sync feature on Microsoft Word, but as much as I wanted to make it work, I just couldn't. And that just goes to show that no matter how much you've been so used to a habit or a practice, if it's not working anymore, you have to learn to let it go. So bottom line is I had to work with Google Docs. And honestly, moving my note-taking system to Google Docs has been such an ease. So the format of my notes for concept-heavy versus computation-heavy courses is a little bit different. So I'm going to start with the former. Each document that I have is for a particular lesson. And to show you how my notes are set up, I'll use my morphology notes as an example. So I have a two-column, a four-size document with narrow margins. At the top of the page, I indicate all important information about the lesson in the course. This includes the lesson number and title, course numbers, semester and academic year I took the course in, and professor's name. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the page, I indicate the course number and title, lesson number, and the page number. By the way, if you want to set up your notes similar to how I set up mine but you're having difficulties here and there, I will have the template linked below so you can easily edit it to what works for you. Moving on to the main portion of my notes, I don't use a well-known note-taking method such as Cornell, charting, or mapping. Instead, I structure and write my notes using bullet points because this is the most efficient and effective way I understand my notes. Notes. At the end of the day, we are taking notes for ourselves, not for others. So whichever note-taking method you choose, it should be one that helps you review and recall core concepts that would otherwise be lost. Each of my courses also has its own designated color set. So for example, I use orange and green for my morphology notes, while I use maroon and olive for ecology. I try my best to designate a different color set for every course because it helps me associate which notes are for which course. So it's far more easier to find key points or core concepts when reviewing later on. The idea with my color set is to establish a hierarchy of content so important points stand out while less important points receive. In my morphology notes for example, I use orange for the headings and important terms while I use green for the subheadings and examples. Now, the way that I write my notes on computation-heavy courses is not any different from how I take notes on concept-heavy ones, so I'll use my physics notes as an example. On good notes, I use the A4 size grid document, a color set of my choice to differentiate important points from less important ones in the ball pen size 0.5. Before writing my notes, I usually divide the page into two columns just so I can save space better. For handwritten notes, I use the highlighter in good notes to emphasize headings and subheadings. As I write my notes, I change the color of the important terms, notes, and comments according to my color set to establish a hierarchy of content. When it comes to computation-heavy courses, there are equations and formulas that I want to emphasize. And to do that, I create a rectangular shape on top of the equation using the shape tool on GoodNotes. For both computation and concept-heavy courses, I make sure to add illustrations and diagrams as necessary to supplement my learning. Now that you've established your format, let's move on to my note-taking process. The very first thing that I do after setting up the format is recording all meaningful information during the lecture using bullet points. At this point, you don't have to worry about changing the colors of the important terms yet or your format because essentially, this will serve as your draft. What's important is you're able to cope with the lecture and record key points or core concepts that would otherwise be lost after the lecture. Step two is to build. In my experience, one of the differences between high school and college is the number of learning materials and resources. In high school, you may survive with just a lecture, but in college, you have to read a number of books, journals, and learning resources on top of the lecture to understand the lesson and even survive the semester. So after writing my draft, or my foundation of knowledge as I see it, I proceed to reading the textbook. There are many approaches when it comes to reading textbooks. There is one where you copy every 
single important information that comes out, resulting to essentially the entire textbook just transferred to your notes, which was me last year, by the way. And there is one where you just skim through the pages, hoping to get a takeaway from the material theory diffusion. Unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, but both approaches don't work well because you don't actively engage with the textbook. So what happens is you forget a significant percentage of the material by the following week. So what I do now is as I read through the sections of the book, I highlight important ideas and take note of any questions that I have about the text. Aside from that, I also try to make connections between the ideas from the book that I'm currently reading to the ideas that may have been discussed in my previous courses or ideas I may have gotten in real life. After reading the sections of the book with the highlights, questions, and connections that I have, I start to take notes. At this point, the notes that I write down and incorporate into my draft are the ideas that have already been put into my own words. This ensures that key points and core concepts are retained in my long-term memory. So I summarize the highlights into bullet point notes and incorporate them into my draft. In this way, I am making connections to the ideas from the lecture that have already formed my foundation. Step three is to review. After writing notes from the lecture in the textbook, I review all my bullet point notes, I delete any that are redundant, and I highlight important terms using the designated color set. I make sure to do this at a later time, maybe a day or two, just so I can let my brain rest, process the information, organize my thoughts, and even gain a fresh perspective because this is also the time when I review whether my notes are sufficient to cover the core concepts. So that is my entire digital note-taking system. I hope Hope you learned something from this video. Let me know in the comments below what your current note-taking system is and I would also love to learn from you guys. Thank you so so much for sticking around and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!